Could we begin, Paul, with uh, just a little bit about yourself? Um, mm -hmm. You're from Belfast. Yeah. You have embraced uh, uh, the Zen tradition, which for many um, might be regarded as an exotic tradition. So it's an interesting uh, journey that you've made, and it might help us to appreciate it all the more, that tradition, uh, knowing where your starting point was mm. and uh, what you've come to value most in the tradition. Mm. For one thing, I, I don't consider Zen that exotic, uh, either perhaps because it's my life, but also the, the nature of Zen, it really emphasizes um, ordinary way, ordinary life is, is the basis of the practice. And I do remember when I was a monk in Thailand and I lived in the forest, and, and was immersed in nature. And I remember little rules, which were part of our lifestyle, which was things like, don't spit in a body of water that might have life in it, of any form. You know? And uh, that just being sensitized in that way. And, and this is, you know, while this was in Thailand, in my own experience, this is the heritage of Buddhism. And Shakyamuni Buddha lived out in nature. Early Zen monks lived out in nature. This is the heritage of it, and really we have just adapted this nature into an urban environment. But the same sensibilities still apply. And as much as they are in accord and harmony with nature, they're not so much exotic as just living with all beings in harmony. Tell me a little bit more about Zen. What is Zen? In a, a very briefly, if you can just familiarize us with some of the... Uh, distinctive contributions of that tradition? Uh, Zen is to be awake in the moment, to connect to what is going on, and to let that connection reveal how to live life in a way where there's less suffering and more harmony with what is happening inside of you and around you and in relationship to all beings. And the, the quality of mindfulness is something associated with the tradition. Can you say a little bit more about uh, how that quality is uh, established and uh, what it means? Because I'm, I want to return to that um, in the discussion. Mindfulness is a sense of presence that, that's not defined by having an agenda are having a necessary consequence, a right kind, but more an appreciation, a savoring of the moment for what it already is, and letting the moment as it already is be the guide, be the teacher, and cultivate appropriate response. Okay. So the, the, the context for our discussion at the Green Living Fair is the, um, I suppose what we would, we've come to regard now as multiple and con a converging sense of transition um, marked by crisis around uh, energy, the energy squeeze, the prospect of peak oil, climate change. There's also a sense that we that our, the ground has been shaken beneath us uh, as a result of the, the financial crisis, which is linked, linked of course, to the, uh, the, uh, the dominant model of, of consumerism and the way we bought into that as a a prominent part of our, our lifestyles. I'm interested in what you regard possibly as the distinctive contribution of uh, Zen Buddhism to those of us who are navigating or negotiating our way through these crises. Is, uh, is there a distinctive message or request of us even that comes from the, the Zen tradition? One of the most distinctive messages of the Zen tradition is to discover, to rediscover for ourselves authentic being. You know, not to just tick on assumptions. Oh, this is how we should live. These are the values we should have. This is how we should relate to the utility of life and, and the attributes, the material attributes that we deem necessary, convenient, desirable in living our lives. But to 
discover in the most radical and appropriate way how to do that. And I think in this sense, Zen is a remarkable tool, a remarkable way of shedding light on the conditions under which we're currently operating. The whole notion of consumerism is an odd one. I mean, there's limited resources. If we consume them, at some point there's nothing left. You know? And there's something extraordinarily self-centered and out of balance of thinking, I consume something else, someone else, some other uh, product of this mutually dependent environment. It, it just seems that as we come into a more centered way of being, that coming into harmony, coming into a mode of reciprocity is, is really what life is asking of us. Paul, you're the uh, director of practice at the Black Mountain Center in Belfast, but you're also the, the abbot of the San Francisco Zen Center. Um, the center has had a long uh, history of engaging with some of these ideas. I know that you've had uh, an early association with uh, Schumacher, for example, who will be, uh, many of the people in the audience today will be very familiar with Schumacher's work. Mm -hmm. Could you just maybe retell that story and that association and, and, and tell me how it fitted into the, the, the project of the San Francisco Zen Center and, and Green Gulch, your other, your other centers? Mm -hmm. um, Zen centers sprung up with extraordinary rapidity in the, in the 70s, mostly in the late 70s. You know, we, we went from one center to three centers, and one of those centers was a property which we turned into an organic farm. And, and the idea was that within the context of that farm that we would dis discover how to live on the land, how, how to live less is more, how we could challenge the presumptions and assumptions of consumerism and discover a way of valuing what we were using, that, that each tool was worthy of mindfulness, worthy of careful attention and tending that this could be a tool of a lifetime. That, that, that the very nature of mindful engagement in what we were doing would produce an economy of use in contrast to consumerism, which, which gives us this false notion that we don't have to be careful, there is an endless abundance. We just simply consume, discard, and start over. And so we try to carry this forth into how we were creating the farm, into how we were creating the other businesses that we were creating, and into the, the standards that we lived as a community. 